Good morning. My name is Marcy Bowers. I'm a physician and surgeon. I work in the San Francisco Bay Area of California. And today I'll, speak, I'll be speaking about gender affirming care for transgender persons, specifically gender affirming surgery. Uh, I uh, spent uh, in my career 20 years working in the field of obstetrics and gynecology. Much of my work though was in reconstructive and pelvic surgery and uh, this evolved certainly after I uh, took over the transgender surgical program in, uh, in what was called the sex change capital of the world in a very small town in Southern California. Since then, I've been elected to the European Academy of Sciences. I'm president elect of the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. And we initiated surgical teaching programs in Tel Aviv, in New York, in Denver, in Toronto, and in Los Angeles. And I myself have performed 2,200 or so uh, male to female uh, genital uh, vaginoplasties and, uh, uh, and uh, nearly, uh, nearly 400 uh, uh, trans, uh, transmasculine genital surgeries since I started in 2003. We follow the standards of care established by WPATH, which stands for the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, of which I am president elect. Uh, you, uh, if you're interested, that we encourage you to join. We have uh, more than 3,000 members currently globally. Uh, patients are generally required to undergo psychological evaluation, undergo one year of uh, cross sex hormones, and live in their desired gender role. Uh, currently, the uh, legal age of uh, completion of these procedures is 18, although it, that varies by country, and uh, there is some trend towards, um, towards accessing these surgeries at an earlier age. My main uh, mentor was Dr. Stanley Biver, who again practiced in a very unlikely place, a small town of just uh, 9,000 persons in uh, very Southern Colorado in the United States. At one point, Dr. Biber had performed nearly two thirds of the world's operations. Hence the, uh, the moniker uh, sex change capital of the world. Uh, I will, sorry, this is clicking quickly. The, I will speak about gender affirming surgery, which divides into three basic parts, facial surgery, um, body modification, which can include um, fat, fat transfers, such as in the Brazilian butt lift, uh, breast augmentation, hair transplants, et cetera. And uh, a third, uh, genital surgery. Um, first, uh, facial feminization surgery. This can include the nose, uh, forehead recontouring, sometimes the jaw, uh, chin and cheek augmentation. Uh, Adam's apple reduction, which can be a marker for maleness in the trans feminine person, uh, et cetera. This is an example from one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Deshaun Braley here in the Bay Area. And you can see how important the face is for a person presenting uh, as trans. Uh, so uh, you can see how the bony features when modified uh, can make a significant difference where the person on the left would be clearly perceived as male, uh, but yet the person on the right, you would have to say is uh, clearly perceived as female. Uh, myself, I perform operations uh, that are considered FFS as well, including tracheal shaving. Uh, you can see how a, what a dramatic difference this can make for someone who has the presence of an Adam's apple. Interestingly, I've performed three of these on cisgender, in other words, non-transgender women. So you can see there's always overlap in any of these uh, procedures. Uh, a very fine line underneath the skin, uh, underneath the jaw is all that should be witnessed at the end. Breast augmentations, this is of course a male assigned person, um, but yet on um, female hormones with the addition of, of uh, breast augmentation uh, can give a very realistic appearance. And finally, uh, genital modification, which uh, I have become most famous for, having performed perhaps more of these procedures than anyone here in the United States. Uh, basically, the procedure boils down to that the testicles are removed, homologous structures are then used, for example, the glands, penis becomes the clitoris, the clitoral, uh, the clitoral glands, I should say, 
and the scrotum can be formed to create the labia majora. And out of the urethra, we create the labia minora mucosa, which is the pinkish area in the middle. And then parts of the scrotum and penile skin are used to create the vagina with retention of the glands so that these patients are not only orgasmic, but also have some, uh, some secretory function. The key to understanding both procedures, whether you're going from, from male to female or female to male, is the understanding that we, is that we all come from the same primordial soup. Uh, in other words, all of the tissues arise from the same areas. The genital tubercle gives rise to the clitoris, or if in substantially hypertrophied form, the penis, uh, et cetera, the scrotum, the labia, et cetera. So this is an example, real life, from a pediatric condition called hypospadias, which is a uh, result of the fact that everyone starts with female vulvar anatomy, and then there is this evolution in the male completed by closure of the midline through the midline raffe, a scar that everyone is able to see. And when that closure is incomplete, you get a urethra opening that is lower down the shaft, a so-called intersex condition, punctuating the fact that even genital formation is punctuated by, is, is highlighted by diversity. So there is diversity in these areas. And so there are examples throughout nature of an incomplete process in this regard. So really we are all connected in some ways. So, uh, and where it comes to transgender surgical, surgical procedures, going from male to female, we would reverse this. And if we're trying to create a phallus from the female vulva, we would go in this direction by closing the, the labia to create a functional urethra. And so now you'll see uh, examples of this. So this is the main procedure I do in my office here. We perform approximately four of these per week. And you can see the miracle of going from this uh, particular image to this in just one surgical procedure lasting about three and a half hours. Uh, some of my evolution, you can see way back, even in 2004, we became very popular for our realism in these procedures. Um, things just very, I'm just getting a quick glimpse of how this looks as we create not only a, uh, not only a clitoral hood, but definition of the labia minora. <clears throat> so further evolution here. Of course, in, in African uh, uh, women, uh, we want to see that pink mucosa as we do in any one, um, but it's really key to see this between the labia and not just a darker color. And of course, the other important aspect is framing of the entire vulva to make it look like a cohesive um, vulvar uh, process. Results show an orgasm rate that exceeds 90%. Uh, the biggest key to this being that a patient is able to orgasm prior to surgery. Depth is usually at least about 15 centimeters. Uh, lubrication, not so much. Generally, these patients do need to uh, provide some sort of external lubrication because the process in the uh, cisgender vagina is, uh, is different. Uh, complications really are very few, uh, notable for uh, necrotic tissue and uh, wound dehiscence occasionally, but really very rarely is, is blood transfusion necessary. Fistula is the most ominous proceed, uh, uh, complication that's possible, which can occur uh, either from the bladder or urethra to the vagina or from more or from the uh, rectum to the vagina, uh, both of which can be, be very troublesome, but fortunately are very rare in, in good hands in this procedure. Uh, anorgasmine, not so much, although we are seeing a newer cohort of young individuals who are puberty blocked prior to Tanner stage two, uh, in other words, in very early pre-adolescence, and uh, in those patients, uh, it's, it, there can be some troublesome uh, difficulty in getting them to orgasm following surgery. So now we'll talk about penises for just a few moments before I conclude. Uh, uh, obviously, when you're trying to create a, uh, a, uh, a phallus for the transmasculine individual, you want something that's functional, you want something that looks like a penis, and ideally, it would be something that they can stand to urinate through. 
uh, genital uh, phalloplasty uh, can be done, can be uh, formed from a variety of, of anatomical structures in the area, uh, flaps from the lower abdomen, uh, from the latissimus dorsi region of the, of the lower back, uh, the uh, inner thigh area, or most popularly because of its thinness, the radial forearm. Uh, the problem with this is that he lives a very, very disfiguring donor site scar. Uh, it's very expensive, generally multi-staged, and there's a high complication rate, some say approaching 80, 90, even 100% um, um, complications, particularly in regards to the very length, long lengthening of the urethra. Sexual satisfaction is variable, but generally very good. Uh, nerves can be conducted so that the, the, this, uh, that this surgically created uh, glands can even have some sensation, uh, but it can be cumbersome in a sexual situation. The alternative is that of a phalloplasty, which with testosterone, the, uh, the clitoris can elongate to, uh, to as much as 11 centimeters. Um, and uh, so that urethra mucosa that we were mentioning earlier can be rolled and formed uh, in the, uh, sorry, labial mucosa can be rolled to form a urethra. So there's examples of this. You can see um, following, this is a reasonably good uh, length on this, um, five centimeters perhaps uh, into the lower limits of the um, uh, of the adult or early adolescent male. Uh, but with testicles implanted, it really can be quite convincing. And obviously here, there is no need for implants or any uh, accessories to uh, achieve not only erection, uh, but also uh, you know, a small phallus in which to penetrate. So once again, my uh, my predecessor and chief mentor, Dr. Stanley Biber, and I operating together uh, in one of his last surgeries in 2003. Uh, I guess I have time for questions or any other comments. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you very much for allowing me to present to you today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much.